Jonathan Levine, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. I think it's fair to say that your firm prides itself on having a truly global presence. Why is that and why do you see that as important going forward? Well, to be successful in investing, you want to constantly increase the top of the funnel, the number of ideas that you're looking at, faster than the bottom of the funnel. So you want to become increasingly selective. And to do that, moving globally allows you to look at ideas across geographies and compare everything to everything else. To be successful doing that, you need to have a fair amount of local knowledge. It needs to be people intensive. And you want to make sure that you're participating in ideas in ways that are relevant to the local economies and local geographies. So what we've generally done is we've spent a lot of time looking at areas of particular interest and then invested in, the, in those geographies and ultimately land people there. So now we have uh, offices, eight offices on four continents and really hopefully have created a competition for capital and for ideas so that we're increasingly selective. It's interesting because traditionally your industry has stuck with America, stuck with Europe. Do you see yourselves as pioneers in that sense and why you're doing that? Um, you know, it's interesting. I'm not sure we're pioneers in that there have been capital markets taking place in all of these local geographies and I think sometimes people look at themselves, I kidded when we opened up in London, that folks thought they were Christopher Columbus in reverse, that a bunch of Americans had come over and just discovered that there's a financial market in, in London. Um, that said, I think what we've done a little bit differently is that we've been able to integrate these different geographies and build out of the center and build out of the core such that we take what we do well and what started in, in our offices in the United States and built on that in relevant ways in um, London, in Hong Kong, and in um, Australia. And I think that that's really been something that we've taken a different approach. We've been able to build organically, yet globally. You mentioned Australia there, and you, you said in your presentation two of your most successful su success stories have been in New Zealand and Australia. Two of our most successful investments among the investments we've done have been down in, in um, Australia and New Zealand. And I think it's an example of they were, one was a portfolio of corporate credits, the other one was a very traditional restructuring of an uh, industrial company in New Zealand. And um, it goes to show you that the core skills of understanding the dynamics of a particular company and the dynamics of an industry um, do transfer um, across the globe. And then how we participated in Australia, where we bought the portfolio, and in New Zealand, um, included partnering with some local, um, some local people, um, working with the management team, and ultimately it looked a lot like investments we've done across the globe. Talking about applying principles globally in that sense, your strategy is at the heart for you guys. Uh, absolutely. I think that... To be successful, you want to make sure, one, that you don't try to be all things to all people, two, that you have a pretty good understanding of what it is you're good at, but most, more importantly, what it is you're not good at, and make sure that you maximize the capabilities of your domain expertise, but don't stray too far afield, and as you know, I've commented before, you're not experimenting. Um, you want to make sure that um, you're sticking to um, what your, your investors expect you to do um, and you're finding increasingly interesting ways to deliver those returns in those asset classes. So talking of interesting ways to deliver, we heard earlier from Mark Mobius who was talking a lot about emerging markets but also talked about consumer and how important that is going forward because that's the same market the world over. Is that something you would agree with and what are your views and predictions for where opportunities lie ahead? Um, I would agree with that although in the credit space I think it's a little bit different because Emerging markets credit is a, a very different area than the traditional corporate credit and industrialized country credit that we would tend to focus on. I think understanding supply dynam demand dynamics across the globe explains a lot of stuff and I think that people have a tendency to want to overcomplicate and you should start with the basic tenets of supply demand and are consumers growing and what are they consuming, where are they consuming and how are they consuming these things. And remembering that that also has some implications back in the United States for our markets as well. It's a very challenging geopolitical outlook out there at the moment, you know, the environment is difficult. How much do you 
look at that and have concerns over what's happening politically through the world? I mean, obviously, there is a huge amount to worry about in the world. And uh, as you know, debt and credit people tend to be on the high end of warriors. Um, I think that there are some positive elements out there that there's, if you think about where the world was in January of 2009 and how worried people were about the capital markets, about the automakers in the United States, about unemployment, um, the, the United States and the UK and parts of Europe have come through a lot. And while the problems seem increasingly um, idiosyncratic and increasingly complicated, um, I'm generally optimistic that time is an important part of coming to solutions. And um, I think that you have to be appropriately conservative, but you want to make sure that you're thinking about the array of possible outcomes and pricing that risk and neither being too aggressive and just betting that everything's going to work out or hiding under your desk all the time. So an optimistic warrior, if you like. An optimistic warrior. <laughs> what do you like about this conference? Because your um, panel was extremely well attended, standing room only at the back. It is a place where so many people gather. So I think it's interesting on three dimensions. The two most obvious ones is it's a wonderful place to see a bunch of people who um, invest in our funds or who might invest in our funds and just get a sense for what a lot of very smart people in the markets are looking for out of their managers and looking for out of their investment programs. Two, there's a lot of people in our business and being able to compare notes in a structured way and hearing what's going on I think is, is, is always interesting to me. And then lastly, this year in particular, there's been a big theme about the convergence of credit and private equity. And, um, you know, 10 years ago, there wouldn't have been any credit managers here. And certainly it wouldn't have been the kind of focus. And I think it speaks to a fluidity in the capital markets and a recognition that there's a lot of ways that you can access risk um, through an investment program. And one of the forms of value investing is credit investing. And I think it's really interesting how that's come together with traditional private equity here. And you've got limitless people here to talk to you about <laughs> yes. that too. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you.